All right, and here is the, I'm heavy enough that I need to park on cement routine. MiG-17, now, interesting across the way there, yeah, behind the uh, Beach 18, there is, you probably can't see it on the video well, there's an F-16 that's painted like the original F-16s were painted. Now, my understanding was the, uh, the two, uh, why F-16s are in bad shape. I don't know, it'll be interesting to hear if there's a story behind that. But here's airplanes that are pretty cool. Use a lot of gas. Mm -hmm. And it's really great that people keep these things flying. L-39s, I was at a ALPA presentation over in, uh, Prague and the manufacturer came and was talking to us about the various uh, aircraft and he says yes a lot of you Americans they, they you fly our airplanes <laughs> and I thought yeah that's pretty cool and I looked at one time uh, the T-33 and I thought that'd be pretty cool and the, and the prices were actually quite reasonable if you want to put it that way but I thought you know why is it you know such a reasonable price and it was because and back then it's probably gotten even worse it was a thousand dollars an hour for fuel and it was about the same fuel burn whether you were flying or taxiing i guess it was not very efficient idly oh a t2 navy trainer i went cross country one time and the guy parked next to me in a t2 and he said basically when you do that you don't uh open any panels to check anything uh, you use the, the concept of it flew in, so it'll fly out. Another L-39, really nice little airplane. And not, they don't always have the seats active, which I think is interesting. I think if I had one of these, I'd want the ejection seat active, but I hear it's quite a maintenance item. Uh, like the, uh, it was kind of a, uh, an eye-opener thing on the, uh, the parachutes for like the Cirrus. The repacking of those was quite expensive. But uh, yeah, quite a quite a fun place oh and the t-33 was the first jet at um, summer camp in the Air Force that I ever got to fly and yeah it's kind of a dog by any uh, standards today of course but uh, back then first jet experience it was pretty amazing for uh, you know a, a new college kid who was going to go in the Air Force and wanted to fly jets uh, quite impressive so that is the line here and of course it varies every year uh, depending on who's coming in and doing what all right and here are the b25s now well that's a bamboo bamboo bomber over there b50 that doesn't count but there are a few other ones up here of course this is this is we're in the heart of the warbird section and uh, this is this is if I had enough money for this or I could pay for the gas for some of these because uh, some of these you know as little as I fly my turbo 310 R my hourly rate is almost as much as the hourly rate would be on an L39 uh, but uh, yeah I can't get as far on it but anyway these are uh, just beautifully restored aircraft and here is the O2, the Cessna 337 converted military. The Cessna had a pretty good run with that. They did the, uh, the A37 here to military from the T. Uh, quite a bit different airplane there. And then the O2. Uh, and of course they just threw all sorts of military stuff on, made it heavy. And when I got my um, multi-engine instructor rating from the FAA, uh, not a designee, an actual FAA guy. Um, I think he thought he was going to be clever, and he says, "Well, how about somebody in a 337 wants to come and get a checkout?" You know, trying to think that you know it is a multi-engine aircraft, but it has different characteristics. And of course, the big thing is this rear engine. If the rear engine fails, uh, you don't really know it very well uh, because you know a lot of times the, uh, the manifold pressure doesn't change, the RPM really doesn't change much, and you don't get much of an indication. And of course, you don't get a yaw out of it at all. Uh, so. 
uh, there's not a lot of big indication that the engine failed. But I had actually, with only a mere 85 hours in the airplane, had had an engine failure on the, uh, the O2. It blew out this rear oil seal here, which is a very nice way for the prop to um, auto feather, which is exactly what it did. Here's the rockets. They don't have any rockets in here. That'd be good for getting rid of aircraft in the traffic pattern ahead of you. Uh, and I believe, yep, that's a gun. That's a Catlin gun. Yep. And, oh yes, the, uh, oh, the radio rack's gone in the back. Uh, usually this has a radio rack, and it just is this full is, of stuff. Yep, and of course it, uh, it didn't have a, it didn't have a Garmin 430 or that, and the attitude indicator wasn't even that fancy, but, uh, yeah. It was an interesting airplane to fly. We were supposed to use it to chase the YC-1415, which, um, I was only in it for four months and uh, did get around to ever doing. Yes, in four months, uh, I got 85 hours and one engine failure. So, uh, that was enough of that. A C1A, when I got my ATP from an FAA examiner down in Van Nuys, he had one of these on his desk. The wings were actually folded out. It looks a little prettier that way. And I knew what it was. And it's always nice when, uh, you know, you know, the model that a Czech pilot has on his desk. That was good. Now, of course, here the old question comes now. How, how, long, how long have you been in the left seat? Yes, sometimes it can be a, a very long time. Mm -hmm. And then we have the T-34 section, and there's Julie Clark, who we saw next to the uh, the parachutes yesterday. Uh, talked to her. I believe she said she was 83. Still doing aerobatics. Gave me a lot of hope. And very beautifully polished airplane. L-39s. Yeah, the Navy used them uh, as trainers and the Marines. And now the Air Force essentially uses one as a, as a T-6. It's a, der a derivative of the uh, T-34, essentially. At least I think that's correct, and I can assure you if I'm wrong, somebody will make a comment. I can always depend upon that. Coming back to the devil dog over there. And this is what we could call the less expensive to operate uh, warbird section. And a lot of these qualify as warbirds because they were trainers.
and the O1s and the L19s. We had an L19 we used for uh, as a tow plane for gliders in a glider club I was in. First getting good service, cleaning your canopy. And here we are out at the Warbird section, and of course this is if you have more money than God area with all the P-51s. And, well, I don't want to say they've always been out of my reach, but they really are out of my reach now for what these things are going for, not uh, let alone the operating cost per hour, but uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have a P-51, because I think a lot of people probably feel that. Just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful airplane. And this is almost unusual for late July in Oshkosh. It's actually almost kind of cool, which is amazing. And of course, great turnout as always.